Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here back with your daily crypto news and analysis. And today we are going to be talking about a ton of things. So sit back, relax, and before we fully jump on into this video, I do just want to ask guys to please leave a like on this video. It does help the channel grow immensely. And of course, I always do greatly appreciate it. Now, with that being said, let's just dive in and let's talk about a few things. Uh, first and foremost, you know, I just want to really quickly address that, you know, during 2021, right? That was the time where everything changed. If you were in before 2021, uh, you really got to watch it really unfold. But, you know, there was a lot of, you know, misconception behind crypto from institutional clients, from banks, etc., um, you know, it, it was the idea that, you know, they weren't going to be adopting crypto. They didn't want to touch crypto. Crypto was some, you know, sort of, you know, massive risk asset class that's never going to go anywhere. And, uh, you know, 2021 was the year that that all changed. We started to see a major demand behind crypto. Um, I've always addressed crypto being the fourth industrial revolution of our, you know, generation. If you guys are, you know, in the younger group, um, and the reason why I say that is because everything is being shaped around crypto. Uh, in fact, I actually have a few articles open over here. So this goes back to March, um, you know, just before April. Institutional crypto funds see largest capital inflow for three months. Uh, you know, it was a weekly inflow of $193 million. It broke a record in the process. Obviously, there has been a lot of institutional demand around crypto and it has been growing in terms of even institutional buy-in. Um, and honestly, as we do see a lot more, you know, focus shift on a lot of, you know, the markets within this market, aka DeFi and things like that, you know, I think that this is going to continue to climb. And, you know, obviously it's a lot, you know, centered around like Bitcoin and Ethereum and stuff like that. Uh, but soon we will see that change. I, I think that as we kind of see, you know, regulations being talked about, spoken about a lot. Um, I think that that's where we will see that pivotal moment in crypto where we will see a lot more focus shifted on some altcoins, meaning like XRP, HBAR, XLM, XDC, uh, Q&T, things like that. Like They're going to take over at a very rapid pace in terms of not only adoption, but a spotlight. Now, I also uh, want to really quickly go back a little bit in time to February where we did see what's shaping the future of the institutional crypto market. Now, again, this is where we look at some solutions and some, you know, categories within this market that have been getting a little bit of a spotlight. Obviously, DeFi. DeFi is huge. Regulated DeFi itself is going to be a huge selling point for a lot of institutional clients, but also security solutions. You know, just altcoins in general, trading volume and tools, things like that will continue to shape the institutional crypto market. Um, but ultimately, I do think that when we look at, you know, institutional, you know, volume, um, it's going to be centered around a few things. And that is, of course, you know, things like the metaverse, NFTs, DeFi itself. DeFi is such a huge, you know, focus point. Um, you, you know, when any, you know, individual that is, you know, maybe an investor that is, you know, a high tier investor, like for example, like Kevin O'Leary, uh, institutional clients that are talking about crypto, it's usually always centered around DeFi or stable coins or some sort of, you know, you know, reasonable category within this market. Uh, but DeFi and stable coins themselves have always been the forefront of a lot of discussion around a lot of, you know, individuals that are high tier individuals in terms of money and capital. Uh, and when we look at that, you know, it's clear that DeFi is going to be the thing that really kind of sparks a major turning point in this market from the institutional client area. Now, as we also see, you know, metaverse and, you know, NFT things growing as well, that's going to spark a retail adoption sort of curve. I think that that's where we will see a lot more, you know, retail individuals moving in on crypto. Uh, I, I just think that when we, we look at the you know, time in this market where mass adoption does take place. I don't even think that we're close to that point yet. Uh, we also seen again, you know, ETFs being, you know, launching, right? Two spot exchange traded funds for Bitcoin and Ethereum will be listed in Australia next Wednesday as institutional adoption ramp, uh, ramps up. Guys, we are at this moment in time where we have, you know, the opportunity and chance to buy up these massive utility gems before the next stage point. 
Obviously, these ETFs are not going to be anything, you know, crazy in terms of, you know, providing value for our altcoins until we do see, you know, of course, an alt season. Uh, but what this does show us is that adoption in terms of the institutional area is continuing to grow. Uh, we also seen Commerce Bank, the first major German bank to apply for a crypto custody license. This is also huge when we talk about banks moving in on crypto. You know, this is something that has been happening for a, a while now. Even going back to 2021 is when it really started to happen. And this is going to continue to grow. Uh, we've seen a lot of companies like Goldman Sachs, you know, join in on crypto adoption after, you know, years of them continuously, you know, downplaying crypto and talking down on it it's become too big to ignore. Now, I also tweeted out yesterday in terms of the fourth industrial revolution, I said the fourth industrial revolution is upon us. We are watching it be designed, built, and adopted right now. The best part is that we are a part of it at a mere $2 trillion market cap. Think about that for a second. And honestly, we are at a $2 trillion market cap. Think about how early we actually are. I mean, if you think about the overall span of some of these you know coins in terms of the markets that they are going after xrp i've always mentioned xrp you know cross-border payments by itself is 156 trillion dollar market combined with again the pre-funded account uh volume that is in swift a 27 trillion dollar issue like you got to look at the overall view here we aren't even touching the basis of some of these assets markets that they are going after i really want you guys to understand where we are currently positioned in this market. Uh, Ripple just posted this. Again, CBDCs hold a lot of promise. Here are three key use cases where we see CBDCs having a big impact on the payments and financial landscape. Again, efficient cross-border payments, access to P2P loans, ability to establish credit history. Honestly, Ripple has been absolutely killing the game for a very long time. I feel like Ripple has showed us the picture before it ever was even printed. And again, I remember back in 2017, even a little bit before 2017, you would see people saying, you know, Ripple is a banker's coin, right? Because nobody knew the difference between Ripple and XRP back then. Uh, they would say Ripple is a banker's coin. It, it's a centralized, you know, garbage, you know, crypto. It's never going to go anywhere. But guess what? As everyone cheers on institutional, you know, FOMO and institutional demand, at the end of the day, guess who printed that picture way before it was ever a thing? Ripple. And XRP by itself, right? Ripple with XRP, RippleNet combined with XRP's potential is truly going to reshape the entire financial system. We've also been seeing QNT, right? being a forefront leader in terms of interoperability. So we do see here, this is the future of interoperability. It is important to note that QNT Overledger is a DLT gateway and doesn't store data or information. All of the data is encrypted at source and cannot be manipulated. In this way, Overledger helps facilitate a highly secure blockchain system. Wait until, you know, institutional clients find out about, you know, QNT. Because I've always said that QNT is going to be a massive name in this space. We look at, you know, uh, stocks, right? We always look at stocks and say, all right, well, that's a blue chip stock. Everybody knows about that. Yeah, I look at crypto and say the same exact thing. QNT is 100% a blue chip stock. XRP, a blue chip stock. XDC, a blue chip stock. Talking about interoperability, check this out. Excited to share that the new bridges that connect XDC to Avalanche, BNB, Polygon, and Wanchain ecosystems are now live. These are, you know, interoperability between blockchain, you know, projects. This is an interoperability like QNT, by the way. Uh, QNT is solving interoperability between legacy uh, platforms and DLTs. The reason why I bring this up is because interconnectivity between chains, multi-chains, right, is also providing massive success for some of these tokens, including XDC. Also, in terms of XDC, again, going after a $19 trillion market. This is huge. I want you guys to understand that, you know, these assets that we are, you know, that we have the opportunity to invest in on a day to day basis have trillion dollar use cases where the top one asset in our space isn't even at a one trillion dollar market cap. I know that I hit it before. I'm just saying in general, you know, a lot of these assets that are at, you know, mere billion dollar, you know, market cap valuations or even maybe under a billion dollar, you know, market valuation are going after trillion dollar use cases. 
So to really kind of look at this market on a macro view and really kind of see where this is going, it truly is so mind-blowing that we are so early in the space when things like this are being built out. And talking about institutional demand, XLM, right? Um, obviously, I, I mentioned this when this came out, but you know, BlackRock also entered into a broader partnership with Circle Pay, including exploring digital market applications for USD coin running on Stellar. Stellar has been absolutely killing the game as well. I, I don't think that a lot of people are paying attention to XLM just because they are really kind of looking at XRP itself. Uh, but XLM is such a huge gem as well. Like, guys, th this current market position that we are in before mass adoption takes over, before institutional grade clients move in. I mean, they have been starting to move in, you know, lately. Um, but when regulations do, you know, hit this space, it's going to be such a drastic change and it's going to happen rapidly. And of course, last not uh, uh, last but not least, sorry, um, Hedera, right? Like when we look at HBAR, everyone's really focused on price action in terms of a lot of these networks. Uh, but you got to realize where we currently are in this market. Like, you know, I, I would say with a lot of the price action in this market, it's kind of reliant on Bitcoin. Like if it wasn't a Bitcoin driven market at a 41% dominance, you know, just think about where a lot of these altcoins would be right now. Um, I look at this and I really kind of address Hedera a lot because Hedera has been absolutely killing the space uh, because look at all of the areas that it's really kind of focused on already. Look at all of the functional use cases that they already have in terms of some of these areas. Payments, by the way, like, you know, their payments use cases are pretty interesting. There's a lot of things within this, uh, like power transition is probably one of the most interesting use cases on uh, Hedera so far that I've seen. Um, but there's so many, you know, use cases on here from, you know, the Hedera token service and even the Hedera consensus service that are really focused on some fairly strong areas, like even healthcare, right? Uh, which again, in terms of, you know, healthcare, I've even said this with Q&T, interoperability is 100% needed. Again, a lot of the interconnectivity between a lot of these use cases are going to be utilizing interoperability, but you know, there's so much going on in this space. It's so interesting. It, it, it's honestly, it, it, like when we look at the vastness of crypto, it's honestly so incredible to say the least to really learn this. Like I, I really say this, you know, I, I've said this since day one. If you are new to this space, you know, research all day long. It will, it, it will make you so much money uh, just knowing what you hold and knowing, you know, where we are positioned currently in this market. And again, in terms of Hedera, you know, they are already working with some of these high grade clients like FIS, right? FIS Global, 50% of the world's money is managed by FIS. Standard Bank, Shinhan Bank. I mean, these are actual banks that are working with Hedera as governing council members. We look at Avery Dennison, DBS. I mean, these are huge names in this space, guys. I want you guys to understand where we are currently positioned and where, you know, Hedera is really kind of positioning themselves as well. Um, everyone's still, you know, focused on things like, you know, oh, the price, the price, the price. Guys, Rome wasn't built in a day. If I have to wait a year, two years, three years, four years, five years to see the value unlocked, I will, you know, gladly hodl. We look at standard banking, right? Banking and financial services across sub-Saharan Africa. Again, they are creating a digital bond platform with decentralized identity and verifiable credentials that will pave the way for issuances of tokenized financial assets to a new range of services to customers across the African continent. We even look at, you know, EDF. Again, they are absolutely killing the renewable energy credit game in terms of carbon offsets and things like that. Uh, this is a top five global utility company focused on a massive transition within energy. FPOS as well. You know, if you guys are in Australia, you know FPOS. Uh, FPOS is advancing the future of Australia's payment rails with active efforts to understand the potential for Hedera to support micropayments, stablecoins, and digital identity. Guys, things are rapidly evolving. We are seeing the fourth industrial revolution before our eyes, and most people are still not awake to see it. So with that being said, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, definitely leave a like, subscribe, turn notifications on if you guys want more free content. You guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord down in the description below. As always, I hope that you all have a beautiful day or beautiful night, wherever you guys are in this beautiful world. This has been Nick. Peace out, guys.